Here's a video on how to uh, disassemble the shocks uh, from a Honda C uh, 250, 500, anything that's similar to this without having any real special tools. Uh, you take them apart uh, so you could maybe repair, replace the shock in the middle. Um, or in our case, we're just gonna powder coat or you could paint or powder coat uh, the colors so it'll match the bike. Uh, here's one that's taken apart already with all the pieces. And we're gonna show you how to take it apart so you can remove all the pieces, paint, powder coat, uh, everything other than the shock itself and then we'll show you how to reassemble everything. So, a couple of the tools that you'll need that I found was, uh, this is a, a bearing separator. You can get these at uh, auto parts store. Fairly inexpensive, you don't have to have a fancy model of one. Uh, I would imagine you could buy one at a parts store for under $20. Um, I bought a length of threaded rod and a couple nuts and washers. It was $6 for the threaded rod and the washers. And uh, I'll be using a vise to do this. If you don't have a vise, you could just use a 2x4 with some holes drilled in it. I put two holes. You have to measure it out so the shock will fit in there and you can use the bolts and you'll see how it'll work as we do it on the vise, but you don't need a vise to do this. Uh, but for our purposes, we're using a vise. Put the shock in the vise, fairly, fairly tight. Then I took this bearing remover, loosen it up so it'll fit over top of the shock all the way. I'm gonna insert it right at the top spring there. Put this on. You don't want it super tight. You're not gonna crank it down. You're just gonna hold it so it holds on those springs. This is our first video, so bear with us. Okay, it's tight enough that it's not going to hit the inside shock, but it is gonna grip that outside spring. Then I took the threaded rod, a couple nuts on the bottom just to hold it with a flat washer on one side. I'm gonna run it up through the hole in your puller. They all have this for so you can press a bearing off. I, those washers on the bottom are just so they it won't pull through. And then I put a washer on the top and the nut on the top. Run it all the way down. That should tighten up as we go. There's one. Our second one looks similar. Different washer, just because that's what I had. Same thing, really. And for safety purposes, I didn't want these uh, threaded rods to spring out. So I used a couple zip ties. Took two regular zip ties, just zip tied them together. Put it around the bottom here, just so they won't move when you're tightening it. Everything's tight. Now you just use a wrench. 
and you start pulling, pulling the spring down. Go evenly on each side as you can, two or three turns on each side. Update, if you need to hold on to these uh, rods as you go, we just took a pair of vice grips. You could use regular pliers, whatever you, you've got around, just so the rod doesn't turn. All right, halfway through our threading process, you can see this collar is getting looser now, and we're gonna wanna just keep going until you can actually see the holding nut inside there. On ours, it's a 14 millimeter. All right, with this down, you'll, you will, you'll see there's a little rubber grommet in there. You gotta push that kind of down. Just use a flat-headed screwdriver, work it down. And then you'll be able to see the 14 millimeter nut in there. With that down, you can see the 14 millimeter nut right there. So I'm gonna grab it with a 14 millimeter wrench on there, tight. Use a big crescent or pair of pliers and we're gonna thread that top piece off. With that top piece off, you can remove the collar. You can see that nut that we were holding on to, which is, it can access with all this not compressed. There's a lot of energy stored up in here, so you wanna be careful when you take it back apart. Same process as before. You're just gonna loosen these nuts up evenly on each side, four or five turns on each side. All right, update. We're about done taking the pressure off of that. So there's no pressure back on the spring. Now we can remove the bearing separator. Like I said, you may have one of these in your shop. If you don't, I believe uh, so auto parts stores will rent them to you. Fairly inexpensive, but you can buy these pretty darn cheap. I'd have to guess under 20 bucks. Then have it to use for its intended purpose. Yeah, then remove everything. There's your spring. Your device. Here's your shock. Here's the bottom piece. Your uh, adjuster. Take that off. We're not gonna powder coat this piece. We're just gonna shine it up powder coat the decorative pieces and the springs and then reassemble the way it was. If we can add on to this one, we'll show you how they turned out. Otherwise, we'll have another video if you're interested. So, hope that helps some people out there. Uh, hope you can use it in your shop. Thanks. All right, we finished up our uh, shocks. Uh, these were powder coated. This one's assembled. We'll show you how to put that on kind of back together. Um, but I think they turned out real good. Uh, it gives it a real professional look without uh, having the cylinder inside painted or the shaft or any of that. Uh, here's one that's taken the one that's still apart. We'll show you how to quickly put it back together so you get the idea. Make sure you just put it back. Same order you took it apart.
Uh, your adjuster goes on the, sh the shock first. That's this part. That's your height adjuster. Your bottom piece here goes on there. Then your spring goes on. Uh, this. Then your top piece will go on. Uh, we'll use the vise again. We set the shock inside the vise. Not center. Make sure it's tight. Straight. Again, we used our puller here. Right over top. Close to the top of the, the shock there so you can get some compression. The jaws have to be able to pass over the actual shock that's on the inside. You just want to hold the spring so the spring is uh, gripped. Used our same threaded rod that we used when we disassembled it. Gonna run it right up through the bottom. Washer on there. That on the top. Spin it all the way down. right on the other side and again I used a couple of zip ties just just safety to keep that those bottom uh, rods from coming loose it seemed like they wanted to spring out on me a little bit just tighten them in there and I'm ready just to start tightening it down remember you want to do it evenly four or five turns on each side so once you get the spring compressed and you can see this nut here, that's when it's time to put the rest of it back together. That cup goes on, this piece threads on, the shaft's starting to turn so we use the 14 millimeter wrench on that nut. up by hand. I'll we'll put a big cushion or a pair of pliers on that. A tight. There we go. That piece is back on. Now just release the tension on these springs. Double check, make sure there's no tension on that spring. Move your nut. Move your washers. Loosen up your bearing puller. And there you go. Shock absorber. Looks pretty professional. Simple as that. Hope this helped you out.